Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Mike Force Podcast. It is your host, Mike G. Um, hey, I, I wanted to do more of these podcasts for you guys because um, I, I just like doing the current events segments because I build these things in my own habits. Uh, because I own Philcraft Survival and part of my routine is kind of looking at news, current events, media, to see what's going on in the world as it relates to preparedness, uh, natural disasters, man-made di- disasters, statistics. A lot of the stuff that I do, I implement in my own company and kind of how we flexed to adapt to offer you value. I think any business looks at the best way to fix problems, but also provide that value proposition, and that's my way of doing it. So, I, I, I mean... Mike Force, I do it for a living, and I wake up every single day tied to current events in the news anyway, so I figured why not give you the things that I'm thinking about as part of the content through Mike Force when the guest appearance version of Mike Force is now being hosted on the Black Rifle Coffee podcast. Big shout out to Black Rifle for allowing me to do that because... Um, Now I could focus these current event segments and do more per week versus the guest segments that I do every Monday on the Mike Force Monday segments of Black Rifle. So uh, a lot of things I'm thinking about uh, now I'm going to be able to talk about and communicate more about because of your listenership or your viewership. If you're watching this on YouTube, I appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe. A lot of guys who who listen or watch don't subscribe. Make sure you subscribe so we can hit you with the notification when this stuff comes out. And also you got to hit that notification tab. Um, if you got any good feedback for topics of subject matter, leave that below in the comments as well. Also, we're everywhere podcasts are found. If you watch, listen. If you listen, watch. Um, We're giving you both of those options. Uh, I like the fact now that you can get on YouTube and put it in the background if you pay for Premiere and listen to it as well. So I I do both of those in my own habits. So let's start off with um, some current events. Idaho, this murder spree that took place in Moscow, Idaho. Uh, We covered it and talked about it in the context of like, man, what can you do? Because nobody's really giving advice. Even the law enforcement officers who offered some advice, didn't give real specifics of what you could do. They were like, yeah, pay attention to your surroundings. That's all you got? Um, They are backstepping a lot on the original things they put out. So one of the issues that you're having is, supposedly they didn't have a communications director. They just stood that up. I believe the state is helping them out with that, meaning a local law enforcement agency, the Moscow Police Department, is getting help from the Idaho State patrol and then the federal bureau of investigations so the fbi is helping as well but they put out originally that the public didn't have to worry because there was no threat to them except then a couple days later they realized oh wait a minute we don't have a suspect the public is in danger because we don't have anybody in custody we don't even have a person of interest and that's still the case today supposedly based on their statements Now, recently it just came out. I think this is fascinating in the context. I'm actually fascinated by this whole situation. Although, albeit tragic, it's also an opportunity for us to learn patterns of behavior, how evil people work to further protect us, and, you know, think about how we're going to do things like pay attention to our environments, self-defense and EDC, all these things that we teach at Philcraft, I, I'm, I'm interested in it. So a mass murderer, supposedly, um, well, not supposedly, but it could be multiple people. It could be a, um, a mass murderer that's a serial killer, goes into this house. The first level is below the surface. Some would think that's a basement, but how this is uh, built on the, the piece of terrain it's built on I don't think it's a basement. I think it has actually has access from the outside on the back side of the, the place. So that's the first floor. When you see the police video of them taping off the area, that's actually the second floor. 
The first floor on the back side, I believe, is the entrance. What you're seeing at the ground level is considered the second floor. The third floor is the second level as you look at the house with the outer balcony. Why is that important? Well, the two girls that weren't killed that were roommates were actually on the very bottom floor. So if you think about the bad guy coming in or the bad guys coming in, we don't know if it was one or multiple assailants. If they walk in to the entrance and they never go down in the basement, they assume that uh, whoever they're trying to target is on that floor and then they go up, they don't go down because it's a basement seemingly, then maybe that's why they were missed. Now, one of the conflicting reports, both the attorney, the attorney's office, and the police department issued statements that said that they were targeted. Now, nobody knew if they meant specific individuals were targeted or if the actual geographical location, the house was targeted. Like if you target a house because you're going to commit an act of violence, you're going to steal something, um, or, and then it becomes an act of violence, you're targeting not the people, but the place, the location. That is very different and distinct than targeting individuals or multiple people in the home. So they said it was targeted. Now, as of like today, they've come out and said, that's not true. We don't know conclusively if anybody or if the actual location was targeted. We don't have any evidence pointing in that direction. And you're like, what? Because targeted is very different than a random act of violence. Targeted made me think immediately in doing the content for Mike Force, oh, they must have evidence that a note was written because they haven't put out the dispatch call that was made to 911 that morning. They also didn't put out any information about evidence they found, according to the law enforcement agencies, uh, thousands of pieces of evidence were collected, 4,000 photographed, photographed um, a lot of stuff to process, and I'm thinking, oh, they must have found a note. There was something left behind that made them think they were targeted, and now today they're saying not targeted. And what? Um, so very confusing. Another key piece of information that came out is both the girls, uh, Madison and the other girl, I apologize, I don't know the names of the, the girls, the, the two gals that were seen on video at the food truck who were best friends, who decided to go to college together, moved in together, were best friends. They were in the same bed on the second floor or the ground floor as you see it and they were killed in that same bed together. The father, during the vigil, openly communicated that to the public that had showed up for the memorial and said that they died together in the same bed. So he has information, according to himself, that he probably got from the police department, that they died together in the same bed. Again, that is very different from a killer targeting three different bedrooms, or potentially four because there's four people killed, but the assumption was made immediately that the young man and his girlfriend were in the same bed. I, I, we still don't know. I don't. If you know and you've heard anything otherwise, like if you heard they were in separate beds um, or they weren't in the same room when they were killed, please leave that below with a reference in the comments. I assume they were in the same bed, and then the killer went into two different separate bedrooms, but that's not the case. So the couple was killed on the third floor, which is the top level, and then the two girls that were killed were killed on the second floor, or the ground level. Now, why would, is that, why would that make a difference? Well, it makes a difference in the timeline. Also, the idea of targeting via... Um, targeting via... Um, methodically going room to room and killing everybody they came across. If they targeted, for example, the couple, and they went to the room and they winded up stabbing the two young girls and realizing, oh, this isn't the couple, then they went upstairs to find the other two victims, them or, or multiple people that were involved, then that is, isn't necessarily n not targeted. And it's also, uh, I'm not saying it's better, but it's not as outside of the ordinary in murders because it's a shorter timeline. Like to go to three separate or four separate bedrooms, 
killing people in their sleep, stabbing them with a straight edge knife, according to the law enforcement agencies, who knows now, who have put it out, said that they were killed with a fixed blade, blade knife going to four different bedrooms and doing the same thing over and over, which is a very intimate act of killing a human being close proximity with a knife, with a knife and doing that four times is very unprecedented. It doesn't happen often because people aren't that crazy. So to state that it was only two rooms that it shortens the timeline and it could have been, um, something not as egregious it could have been we went into, they went into one room tried to target or kill somebody realized it wasn't them went to the next room and then they were out in a short period of time versus this long stretch of time from two to three in the morning by the time they got to sleep um after the phone calls were made to the ex-spouse times seven calls uh of one of the girls and then they discovered him at 11 o'clock in the morning the next morning seven hours later seven eight hours later so I, I just put that out there because this case continues to change. Now, I, I wanted to talk about a few things that I had put on social media because I'm naturally curious about this. I, I do podcasts, I do content for a living. I have a lot of things going on. A lot of you don't know actually a lot about my business. And the reason I wanted to frame this around this discussion is because I wanted you to understand my business so you can understand uh, what I'm going to talk about when it comes to economics, uh, resilience in the economy, the list goes on. Also, the, the fact that um, 47% of our workforce has been turned over, according to last year's statistics. And this year's statistics, it's going to increase. And, and we'll talk about that in a second. A lot of you guys who listen to me on Mike Force think that I am Phil Craft Survival. And technically, that's true. I mean, I own Phil Craft Survival. I started Phil Craft Survival LLC, a company, in 2015 in a shipping container in Pakistan when I was a contractor because I wanted to create something for myself and a deliberate business plan. Like this wasn't like an accident. I literally said to my my buddy at the time, who was he's come out of the out of the uh, darkness on this. I won't say his first name, but I'll just say he's Ryan Owens' brother a former dev crew operator who was killed, unfortunately, in a hostage rescue um, that took place in the Horn of Africa. This was his brother that I served with in contracting. And, and I only say that because he was also in the Navy and he's a good, he was a good friend of mine. And he helped me kind of put together a business plan because I knew I wanted something different in my life. I just wasn't sure what it was going to be. And I also knew nothing about business. The first time I ever stepped onto social media, which was very few people from special operations that were doing that. Why does that matter? Well, in special operations, we didn't have social media accounts. We didn't do that at all. In fact, I think as a part of our security clearances, at least at the unit level, we weren't allowed to have social media. So I started Phil Craft with the idea of preparing citizens for the worst case scenario. Now that was an original, an original mission statement that I made, which is still what we do today, except now it's just not me. In 2016, we got the Malaysian uh, uh, PSD deal with the King of Malaysia. I was training with uh, my business partner at the time. I was training um, Army and Navy Malaysians that were in special operations to be protective bodyguards for the King of Malaysia. And I had that contract for a period of time and did a lot of training around that. And then just did tactical training. I trained law enforcement here and there. I did uh, civilian open enrollment courses. But it wasn't really until 2017 and um, our, loca our relocation to Arizona, Prescott, Arizona, that I started teaching classes and started the concept of what you now know as Philcraft Survival. Now we have over 50 employees, uh, including full-time and subcontracted employees, uh, everything from subcontracted um, lawyers to um, uh, media people to 
tactical instructors to content providers to HR, COO and executive staff, media, marketing, the list goes on. Now, a lot of people think it's just me training. We train 10,000 citizens a year. So it's a team of people training for Philcraft Survival. If you go to f- train at Philcraft Survival, you'll, try, you'll find four to six different courses every weekend across the nation, and it will be in certain locations, and it will be with very specific, highly vetted instructors vetted by Sean Kirkwood and Kevin Owens, two men that I serve with who ran training in the special operations community for us in the military um, and now do it for um, civilian training and law enforcement and military training for Philcraft Survival. So a lot of the revenue that we make is from media, and a lot of the revenue we make is from training and products. We sell products in wholesale, direct-to-consumer. These products you can find on fullcraftsurvival.com, and you can find them in your local Black Rifle coffee shop because we have real estate there where we sell first aid kits, mobility bags, um, EDC bags, uh, tourniquet holders, tourniquets, swag all over the United States, wherever Black Rifle Coffee can be found. In fact, I'm teaching, by the time you listen to this, I'm teaching a Phil Craft Survival Seminar with 100 people in Black Rifle Coffee. Now, why do I lay all this out for you? Well, I lay this out because I am an experienced entrepreneur in business who has learned from mistakes and also learn through experience, living the entrepreneur game. A lot of people think they know how to run a business, but the reality is they don't. And like me, they're just trying to figure it out step by step, day by day. For example, I have lost a lot of employees because they quit, I fired them, or they self-selected and resigned. And I'm describing this because it's one of the most difficult things that I've seen entrepreneurs deal with, but also people deal with, because it's not just an entrepreneur problem. It's a, it's a, um, people problem. So according to statistics from the labor, um, um, labor stats, 47% of employees were turned over from all walks of employment last year. That number is going to increase potentially by 20% by the end of this year, which means let's just call it 50% for the sake of reasonable math. Half the people that are working in this country have left in a period of time. I don't know what the labor stat is, but turnover, I imagine, is a short period of time because they are not fulfilled. They are not paid. Uh, and they do not have profound purpose. Those are the main reasons, according to these labor stats. Number one is purpose. Number two is pay. Um, And when you look at purpose, that could be a lack of leadership. That could be a lack of incentive for them to do something they don't really want to do, which is why we're having issues. Like 105 railroad workers that are currently right now striking, that they said they would go on strike December 9th, if certain meet needs were not met. What are some of those needs? Um, paid sick leave. Right now, railroad workers, according to the union uh, released information, not according to me, but what they released, they get one paid sick day a year. One day. One day. They're asking for seven a week based on doing a very labor-intensive job where they don't make enough money in the first place. I mean, there's certain um, professions like law enforcement, first responders, period. I mean, firefighters are paid pretty good. So are law enforcement officers in certain places. But overall, law enforcement officers are undertrained, underpaid. Teachers, will we not agree that teachers should be compensated more? Well, these unions exist for this because they have representation in organization and in numbers. So... They said if you don't pay us a 24% hike over four years with back pay, we're going to walk. Why is that important? Well, 40% of our supply chain is handled by freight carriers through trains. 40%. That's a lot. That is a lot. 
I mean, one train is like a lot. I don't know. I say a lot. It's like 40 something tr- uh, trucks per on average or something like that. That's a lot of transportation that's handled and managed by the railroad system that we are underpaying, under incentivizing, and they're just asking for those things. Why is it a critical juncture in socioeconomic issues? Because our world, the worlds of Americans, depend on supply chain. And what have we seen in our country suffer across the globe, suffer from the outsourcing of these supply chain things? I mean, when you're depending on a system, like I'm wearing origin jeans right now. Why do I wear these jeans? Because I believe in America. I mean, I wear a Black Rifle Coffee hat because I support veteran-owned businesses. I wear a Pendleton shirt because Pendleton's an American brand, even though this shirt's probably made in Bangladesh. It's putting Americans to work. I'm wearing uh, an Eris watch made by a CIA contracting buddy of mine um, that he makes in Washington. I'm wearing Origin jeans made in America. And these are important consumer decisions that we make every single day, but we're still on, I don't know, Chinese cell phones that are being currently stagnated in the supply chain because the Chinese are striking because of all the issues they're confronted with labor-wise. So when we outsource our supply chain and then don't incentivize our own supply chains, including fossil fuels, including Uh, railroad workers, when they're making record profits, that's a significant issue. Here's what I'll tell you about my own entrepreneur experience. When I hear 47%, there's two things that come to mind. Well, one, I did a survey, and there's a current survey on my stuff that's active, and I asked the question, um, who thinks Americans are, uh, are we lazy? Uh, Is the labor force lazy? And according to some statistics, Um, One of the statistics, what does the future of our country look like over the next two years? We're fine, just fine, 14% out of 3,000 people. We're screwed, 86% think we're screwed out of 2,920 people surveyed. When it came to the lazy survey, out of the 15,000 people who voted on that, 90% of everybody surveyed, now, now this is a social media survey, there's no institution backing this, But 90% said, we're lazy, right? And 10% said, no, we're not lazy. And I didn't give any context or options to um, add your opinion. But I said, are we getting getting lazy? The overwhelming majority said, yes. This isn't like 51-49. This isn't like the Herschel Walker race for Senate in Georgia. This is very apparent by most Americans. We're lazy and we're entitled, is what you would get from that. And we're screwed. We're screwed. I have fired a lot of people in my company who I used to look at as friends for incompetence, doing drugs, getting caught doing drugs on the job, significant incompetence, unethical behavior that I have captured in multiple and various forms and have conclusive proof that I can't even deal with legally because it would put us into another legal bracket because it's so egregious and then had those same people talk crap about us as a company like whoa bro like you do realize like I know everything that happened because I have electronic evidence of it and this is so unethical I can't even say it out loud and lawyers are like don't say anything until it comes until until it's a lawsuit or a case Like, save that for a rainy day. Like, oh my God. And so, if you look at the overall arching theme here, is there's a lot of Americans that think they're entitled. I mean, I just talked to an entrepreneur and I said, hey, what are the entrepreneur issues that you deal with? Well, he said, I pay people $26 an hour and they would work for a couple days and then come back and say, eh, I don't want the job. Now, that's an option. That's a choice. If you look at the Twitter fallout when... Elon Musk took over Twitter, where he said, hey, come to work. If you don't come to work, then you're not going to come to work at all. And then people jump on the bandwagon of the woke folk that are saying, 
How dare he do that? Oh my gosh, you've never run a business, have you? Because keeping a business afloat in this economy, where the housing market for the third straight month in a row is down, interest rates are up above 6%. We are, un- while, we're donate- while we're giving money to foreign powers to fight their own wars, with no end state or, or objective, talking about Ukraine. Like, I, I love the people of Ukraine. I want to support them. But if there's no end state or objective, then what the hell are we doing when we have so many issues of our own? Let um, Chad Robichaux's and nonprofits take care of that, which they're doing a good job. But let's not take taxpayer money and start just pissing it away when we have a lot of things to focus on here at home. And we do, definitely. So... All of these socioeconomic woes are making us less resilient. But it's a cultural thing is the overall arching point that I'm trying to get to. This is not just a problem with labor, a problem with railroad. These aren't isolated instances. This is a culminative decline of our social status as human beings, as Americans. You know why? Because we have an overabundance of and less scarcity than we've ever seen in American history. Well, what does that mean, Mike? Well, I mean, I want you to think about it. I'm going to take a little sip of this whiskey. Big shout out to the guy who gave me a taste tester of all this whiskey. If you uh, like a particular whiskey and you want me to try it, there's two things I'll always accept. Uh, Three things. Guns, uh, whiskey, especially Kentucky bourbon. I don't like scotch. I'm not a scotch fan, unless it's Shackleton scotch. And books. Those, those uh, will never steer you wrong. But big shout out to the guy who gave me the tester. Uh, this is Knob Creek, which is a uh, 93 proof. That's pretty big. Whoo. Damn. Okay. Yes. That's really good. Um, love my Kentucky bourbon. Wow, that's strong. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, let's talk about feast and famine. What is feast and famine? Feast and famine is the cycle of life that the entire natural world operates. What's feast and famine? Well, a cheetah hunting gazelle and the Serengeti. When that cheetah is hunting that gazelle, there is one driving factor to have him or her wake up. I always think cheetahs are hers for some reason. Wake up every single day. And go after their prey. So they hunt, they scout, they walk, they labor, they do all these things, and their incentive is hunger. It's not starving to death, it's not being famished or famined and dying. It's a natural part of our survival. So, what happens when you're part of a country that's so damn good that we don't have labor forces? You know why we don't have labor forces? Because we're too good, right? I mean, I mean, have you been to California? Do you think there's white people working the fields in California? No, 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 no. There's a reason they put a cap and they want to push out immigration laws. And I get it. Because if you ever go to the belt of central California that is feeding the country, you think there's a white dude in the fields? A white, black, American inside the fields picking that corn, picking that wheat, picking those avocados. No, there's not. It's a Mexican immigrant, most likely. So we are a nation that have it so good that we use uh, migrants from different countries, even American-made companies. I won't put the company out there, but I ended up pulling business with them. I went to a place in, in Illinois and got a bag made. When I made that bag through that company, it's not because I didn't pull the bag because of this. They had too many contracts on board. But they said, hey, you want to be American made? I said, absolutely, I want to be American made. Why would you not? It's why we do the best we can at making American made whatever, because I want to retain as many American jobs and American uh, processes and and manufacturing as uh, as possible. It's why we we, uh, support, I got Jocko's new Origin camo back there. I have uh, Origin uh, pants. I get it. But I went to this manufacturer and then all the sewers times 200 We're from a foreign country. Again, not that that's bad, but that's the world we live in in America. 
So how many people you think are going to build iPhones? I always love the guys who I, I saw a guy on Andy Stump's uh, Instagram the other day. Andy Stump did a post about his Kalispell location. And Andy Stump said, hey, can't wait. I'm hiring people. A solicitation for jobs. Like, that's a good thing. Positive. And some jerk commented, oh, too bad you're supporting those those guys who are supporting the Act Blue, the, the Democrat um, uh, charity organization that collects money. Because there's a whole bunch of people who have donated to Act Blue. And I already talked to Evan Hafer on a YouTube content on YouTube content uh, for you guys and asking, hey, what was that about? He supported Tulsi Gabbard, who now is disaffected from the Democratic Party, who he donated like donated like five hundred dollars to Tulsi. Like Tulsi's a rock star. She's a lieutenant colonel in the reserves, tons of experience in, in, in combat. And now it's like screw the the um, the corrupt organization that is the government. I'll do my own thing as an independent, which. Hey, that's brave. Most people would never do that. She did that. So a, a report, and I don't, I don't track the drama, guys. I don't know the details of this. But a thing came out that said a whole bunch of employees, which is a couple, donated to Act Blue. Black Rifle Coffee Company has 2,000 employees. Do you think I'm going to go and ask the political affiliation of my employees? No. Because politics is very different than proposed value. Like, my values are very important to me. That has nothing to do with politics. I do vote conservative, but I'm an independent. So if there's an independent perspective, it's no political line or party define me. I define myself. But it just so happens that the majority of conservative ideology, including policy, I agree upon. And there's certainly things that I don't. Like, I don't think weed is that bad. Marijuana should be legal, legal in this country because a lot of people are sitting in jail for no damn good reason besides they were selling weed or they were smoking weed or they had weed on them. Like what? I don't want my taxpayer dollars putting somebody in jail and spending $60,000 to $75,000 a year to provide that. Like go after the hard criminals that are actually doing damage and breaking law. Anyways, you get the point. So I said to this person, that's interesting that you could have that ideology because have you looked at the tens of thousands of employees that uh, work for Jeep Chrysler? Because you have a whole bunch of Jeeps on your social media page. So if you are being straight and fair, then would you not assess all the things, especially the Jeeps that you love? You're assessing the coffee that you drink and attacking Andy while he's trying to provide jobs for Americans. But you won't hold yourself to the same standard while you're texting it on a Chinese-made cell phone where the Chinese are protesting right now over the COVID restrictions and issues they're having in iPhone factories in China, courtesy of the iPhone that you're holding in your hand, texting about. What I mean is we're so freaking entitled, we don't even get it. Like, how can you attack an American veteran-owned entrepreneur when you literally are talking about a company um, with your Jeep and your Chrysler and not holding anybody else accountable. Like, are you going to burn your Jeep in your driveway uh, because you don't agree, uh, you, but you're boycott a coffee company? I, I don't get it. But here's what I do get it. People are entitled. Americans are freaking lazy. Now, I don't say that as a blanket statement because I know a lot of Americans who aren't. Like, every employee that works for me right now, not lazy. You know why? Because they still work for me. So there are a lot of good, hardworking Americans. I don't want to blanket Americans that way. But the scary thing for me is our resilience is built off of our social status as a culture. And then that gives us a prospect for a positive future. So if we're headed in the wrong direction, direction because we're all glued to the algorithm on social media, spend less attention and time in our family units and building our health and wellness and more time on Instagram, then man, don't you think we're heading the wrong direction? Well, 90% of you that I just polled think the same. What is the fix? Well, let me close this podcast out by saying there is a fix. Here's a few fix fixes. One, start investing in yourself and your self-reliance. This isn't a plug for Philcraft. I don't care. Like we have, we have Amber's new sixty-two uh, family program. Uh, the guys were telling me, "Hey, we need to start talking about." It. I don't need to talk about anything. Like 
that program, if you want to invest, invest in it. If you don't, invest at a minimum in yourself. In yourself. Start right now with getting a good night's sleep. Reprioritizing and restructuring your finances, your uh, finances and financials personally. Build resilience in your own family by building the right habits when you wake up. Wake up, take care of your family, pay your bills, do the normal basic stuff that used to be like, what do you mean go read a, read a book? Yeah, like read a book. Why? Because reading a book right now is more positive than being saturated um, and, and by, by trolling all over social media. Um, go for a walk. Whoa, we're talking about just going for a walk? We used to talk about like do a marathon. We just want you to go for a walk. Like, thank God 100 people are coming to my seminar, and, and, and I'm thankful for that. Because to get 100 people to show up anywhere outside of Netflix is a big deal. Is a big deal. So there are steps and habits that you could do every single day. Number one piece of advice, get your finances in order. Get your finances in order. Start consolidating your debt. Start hammering down on your debt. And utilize debt smartly, but start holding cash and capital and investing in things that are going to help you. Training. Um, sustaining your survivability. Food, water, shelter. Paying off your bills and your debt. All of those things are better and broader investments in your personal reliability, which means self-reliance long-term, which makes you more resilient long-term, even in the short-term. Second, focus on health and wellness. A lot of us aren't well, guys. Record suicide rates. 100,000 Americans this year will die from drug overdoses. Those are record numbers. I can tell you right now, active shootings aren't systemic. It is not an epidemic. Killing yourself in this country is an epidemic because half the gun-related deaths are not homicides or mass shootings. They're actually suicide. 100,000 Americans this year will OD, mostly on fentanyl, different types of dope, and we are not paying attention to it. Well, why does that matter, Mike? Well, what do you think happens to people who are less mentally resilient? They depend on things like drugs to get them through it. Hell, the pharmaceutical industry, big pharma, put us in that bind in the first place by massively advertising and marketing opiates, um, including Percocet. And then when those people cut cold turkey, what do you think they were left with? Well, they had to go out to the streets and get meth. Because what, are, what else were their options? They didn't have any. So... 100,000 people ODing from drugs this year alone. Homelessness, crime, all the bad stats up, all the good stats down. If you're focusing on your health and wellness, then you're doing things like getting a walk. I talked to Echo9.axiom. It's A-X-I-O-M, a former special operations guy. That guy, amazing conversation I had on the Black Rifle Coffee podcast. We talked about this level of resilience. But you know what I made? A correlation between an operations guy who serves in the military at the tip of the spear and then kind of focuses on that as his main effort and forgets about everything else, his family, social networks, friendships. He forgets about all that because operations is the key. The correlation for civilians is civilians forgot about everything that exists in their real life because they're focused on the algorithm, perpetuating and benefiting only the billion-dollar tech companies. Because what's more important than checking my Instagram constantly throughout the day? How often do you do that? Well, probably not making you healthy or well if you continue to do that for a long extended period of time. And me and Eric talked about like, hey, go out for a walk. Hey, read a book. Hey, put down your phone. He, uh, Eric makes a recommendation of taking the applications that you spend the most time on and put them on a separate device to keep it separated. You got to keep them separated. These are some things that you could do right now. Health and wellness also includes a good night's sleep. Uh, one of the most uh, impactful things that I ever discovered, which is why I'm probably not all that conservative when it comes to my political views, is marijuana. Now, I don't like a lot of THC, but I definitely do use CBD and CBN. So much so, I started my own damn company, The Wolf 21, 
because I couldn't find a sleep supplement. Worked with Slumber, which is the, the parent company, and they allowed me to create my own brand, and I gave it away to all my veteran buddies, and they all are subscribed it for free because I need to feed them to make sure they're getting sleep because CBD and CBN, which is a natural element, and your cannabinoid receptors that is eliciting the natural ability to suppress pain and get a good night's sleep helps me. Not getting four hours of sleep because Gary V says so, right? I, all this influencership, which is pointing us in the wrong direction, I don't get it. Um, we need to do things like 75 hard with First Form and Annie Frisella. We need to do things like get off our phones and spend time with our family, says Mike Glover from Philcraft. We need to do things like separate the app and focus on family like Eric. These things are things that you have in your control right now. You don't need an account with Philcraft. You don't need an account at the gym. You can do this shit right now. That's how we become more resilient. And I think our country is in trouble, but I think our saving grace is you. You're the saving grace, guys. You're it. Because if you get off your ass and you do something about it right now, we're going to be okay. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the Mike Force podcast. I know I am. Thank you so much for being a listener. Catch me on Mondays, every Monday on the Black Rebel Coffee podcast, uh, a couple of times a week by myself on the Mike Force podcast, everywhere where podcasts are found. Guys, I hope you have a good week, the rest of your week. I'll be in Texas at Gritter Outdoors training. Survival Seminar on Friday in Dallas, Fort Worth. Saturday, Pistol. Sunday, Carbine. Headed back home to do some duck hunting with Sean Weaver and some of the local guys down the road. I appreciate you. Till next time, make sure you visit us at PhilCraftSurvival.com. Peace out, guys.